I would like to continue this, this, this discussion about the trends. Have you observed any other significant uh, changes in the cons consumption of beer and other alcoholic beverages among Polish uh, consumers recently? And uh, how does the Polish structure and model of consumption of alco alcoholic products differ from your export markets and Western European countries? Well, I'll probably start the second part of your question. Um, spirits and beer, I mean, uh, this discussion have been uh, taking place in media over last, not just one year, but many years, right? <coughs> and both categories are saying, yeah, yeah, you know, uh, one influence the other. In fact, um, there is not much truth in that, right? Because we believe and we've got a strong evidence that there are quite a different occasions for spirits and for beers. Unfortunately, in the last couple of years, particularly in the COVID years, the structure of cons consumption for spirits and beer have changed. As I said, uh, some outdoor events like big music concerts have disappeared from the calendar of uh, younger consumers. This poll rock have not been held for the last two years, unfortunately, and thousands of people didn't come to concerts or sport, uh, sport events. And that moved the uh, consumption of beer to more like planned occasion, right? So people are buying bigger quantum of beer in uh, discounters and take it home and socializing a bit less. Uh, and um, if we look at the statistics uh, back to 2021, um, so the beer segment reduced for 4%. That's the industry statistics and we believe that's the number which is a little bit worrying, right? And at the same time, uh, one can remember that in the last three years, we did have quite substantial excise increase. Uh, the tax for beer have increased for 10% back in 2020. Then we had a sugar increase, which is, which is in fact affecting the flavored beers and non-alcoholic beers, right? And in 2021, in 22, we had another 10%. And excise is still on schedule for next five years. So in five years from now, the beer excise in Poland would increase for 50%, 5-0, which is quite substantial. And obviously, uh, we looked at the uh, excise collection from, uh, from, from spirits as well. So uh, it has increased in 21 for 14%, while the beer excise collection increased only for 5%. So we see a different dynamic. So, so the spirits are much less elastic. They actually uh, growing despite of excise in beer is falling, uh, stimulated by uh, consumer goods inflation and, 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 and excise. So it's a different dynamic and we also believe, as I started to say, uh, the, the occasion for drinking is very different. And coming both bo bo for those uh, differences between our consumption and, and I mean, Polish uh, consumers consumption patterns and other, uh, your other um, export markets. Can you share your, yeah. especially that you have also experience from different uh, different countries? Mm -hmm. So I would say that could be very interesting for our viewers. Well, if we look at the neighborhood countries, right, uh, the beer markets, typical beer markets, it's Czech and Germany, right? And the construction of consumption is a bit different. Uh, Poland have been traditionally vodka market, right? Vodka and beer and beer actually joined probably at the later stage. Poland was always famous of great vodkas produced locally, great spirits. By the way, the um, excise regime in both in Czech and Poland, neighboring countries, much more favorable to beer. So the people in Czech or, po or Germany, they pay much less excise. So beer is a little bit more affordable comparing to hard spirits. And probably that's the cultural piece and also the price piece which influences the consumer decision. And still, uh, Germans and Czechs, Czechs particularly, they still drink, uh, you know, 170 liters per head you know, twice more than Poles. Is it healthy or not? It's a different question, but that's the reality of today. Uh, it's uh, always uh, difficult to talk about the future and in nowadays even extremely uh, difficult. But as a manager, you have to create plans. You have to decide what goals to achieve. So uh, what are the goals and wha what are directions in, in the coming years for Compania Pivovarska? What do you think? What we know that next like 18 months are going to be difficult, right? So, um, and it's difficult to predict for longer than this kind of 18 months ahead. So 22 is going to be difficult and probably followed with um, 2023, which is going to be also uh, rather difficult from um, consumer inflation, the prices and the raw materials, the packaging materials, availability of some services like logistics so services in Poland. And therefore, I think we, we all need to be prepared as a kind of companies or even consumers to have a 
difficult time ahead. Um, and the recipe to that would be stability. If I look or if I can wish to Polish government to show some the stability, that would be in the first call I would want to, to make. Because for any industry, whether it's beer or any other FMCG, it is important to work and operate in predictable environment. That's the key. Because we are accountable for many people employed by us, right? And even one wor workplace in beer industry creates free jobs in logistics, in retail, in horeca, etc. So we're accountable for a lot of uh, job places. And stability for us means job security for people in Poland. As a big, big company, big organizations, we're trying to contract with our suppliers and create a partnership relationship to ensure that we get the services delivered, that the packaging materials are coming on time, which is not always easy these days, right? So therefore, our connections and interaction with suppliers is a, is a key, right? And then, obviously, our strategy uh, proved to be successful. We're going to continue on value creations. We're going to continue our premium focus strategy. We're going to continue uh, developing new propositions in uh, non-alcoholic spaces, uh, flavor it. We're going to continue promoting and investing into, uh, into our brand assets. And that effort actually requires technology. Uh, technology changes the way how we interact with retailers and the digital magic digital world is coming here because obviously we need to have a very short interactions and intense exchange of data between producer and retailers to know what is in demand, uh, what type of promotions are uh, working well and what's not working well. And at the same time, I think it's important to understand that uh, the diversification of the offer, the, the uh, diversifications of the packaging which offered to the uh, shopper requires technology. And uh, actually that is the, that's where the investment should be coming to the breweries. Because we talk about the different liquids, we're talking about small runs, we're talking about specific um, oriented to some customer's proposition. Uh, and we're talking about actually different packaging solutions, which means different machinery, different robotics, uh, different applications of packaging line, etc., etc. So it's a mix of desire for stability, choices in marketing, and sequential investment into our manufacturing assets. It should all work together. So you use the word investment. So what kind of investments are required to achieve those, uh, those plans, firstly? And secondly, if you can elaborate a little bit uh, more about investment into, into sustainability, because we are facing the, the transition towards a sustainable economy. Can you elaborate a little bit about those plans, if you can share with us? Yeah, look, I mean, um, I don't think that I can openly say yeah, how many millions we're going to uh, invest into Poznan or Bellastock, but uh, the direction of the investment, as I said, it's the modernization of uh, packaging lines specifically and also thinking about technology which enable to make different products. Because breweries historically built, been built to brew lager, right? And now we are moving from typical lager production, big cylinders, big conical tanks into smaller batches of flavored products, which requires very different hygiene, very different packaging solutions, right? And that's where investment are going to come. Not to add more <coughs> cylinders, but to add the machinery and robotics and different type of um, you know, uh, vessels to mix those drinks and to make sure that consumers really like, like it. So it's, a, it's equipment which is uh, mostly in packaging area and um, you know, uh, liquid production area. It is interesting that in the group, in Osahi group, starting from this year, the group started to measure sustainable uh, profit. Uh, and it's like it's a profit which is generated by using clean energy, returnable packaging, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, which was interesting for us to first time ever understand that only a small percentage of our profit is really coming from sustainable sources, right? And it's a journey which company undertakes to 2030 to even 2050 to make sure that the more EBITDA, more profit every year comes to sustainable terms. And specifically in Poland, I think Kampania Piwarska may be proud of that 41% of all our bottles are returnable. So 41% of all our containers are actually environmentally friendly. That's the best solutions which may have. And at the same time, we're going to continue on uh, looking at like um, uh, external partners because we can influence directly and we can even make our breweries more environmentally friendly moving and we're thinking of um, 
eco-friendly or sustainable sources of steam energy, which is the next kind of planning horizon for us. But then we speak about agriculture and trucking and logistics, and there is no solution for trucks. So we don't have Elon Musk, you know, automatic American trucks running in Poland yet. Not yet. Not yet, but at some point something will come. And therefore, we have to optimize what we can do now, thinking about future, which may give us technology to make sure that actually the third leg of um, our CO2 emission is minimized. Third leg, I mean this transport, the agriculture and other suppliers, which is important. So we think about in-house and outside as a combination. So thank you very much, Mr. President, for your time. Uh, pan Igor Tichonow, prezes zarządu kompanii Piwowarskiej SA, był gościem naszego programu. Rozmawiali Michał Siwek. Dziękuję. dziękuję I Wojciech Szarą. Bardzo dziękujemy. Do zobaczenia. Do zobaczenia.